Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. And this is actually a really impromptu video that I just kind of want to make to share some thoughts after the crazy iPhone 13 pre-order launch day thing. So after I got my pre-order in, you know, I took to Twitter to see what other people are buying and got into some discussions and friendly debates. I love you, Patrick, about different features of the phone, what we're excited about, what we have doubts about and concerns. And so in this video, I just want to share my thoughts about why I purchased the one terabyte 13 Pro Max, um, as well as the couple of concerns that I have for the phone. Now, if you're curious, yes, I was amongst the first people to uh, order and get the first batch in. So the phone will be arriving Friday. Actually, I'm going on vacation to Seattle. Uh, so I set it to pick up uh, there at my sister-in-law's place. So if any of you fellow creators or people are in Seattle and want to say what's up, may see out there. But yeah, that'll be fun. And I'll still have a video out uh, by the end of the weekend and have some more scenic places to film in. If you have questions about the phone or what you want to specifically see with the camera and stuff, let me know down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them in the video. Uh, once I film it later this week. But anyway, why did I go with the one terabyte option? Well, the first obvious reason is just normal storage. I basically the other day looked at my 12 Pro Max and realized that I'm at almost 400 gigs of, uh, you know, storage capacity on this guy just from app data and photos and videos. And so I knew that with ProRes coming later this year, and just the camera in general, I'm gonna be taking even more pictures and videos. And so the 512 would have been pushing it, but it just made sense to get the one terabyte. There were so many people mad at me for spending $1,600 on a phone. Not that it's any of like your business, but I mean, I'm trading in my 12 Pro Max and so that like half the cost of the phone. I mean, as a business expense, it totally makes sense for me. Now let's talk about that ProRes because that's exactly what Patrick Tommaso and I were having a very friendly uh, debate over on Twitter about. And firstly, I gotta say, I love Patrick. I respect the hell out of him. I even told him half the reason I followed him in the beginning was because I love his outlook on creating about not getting super caught up in like the nitty gritty pixel peeping and, and tech specs and all that stuff. And at the end of the day, it's just about getting out there and creating. 100% agree with that statement. And he kind of embodies that idealism constantly and so that's great but my viewpoint is i you know want phones to be able to film footage like an aria alexa someday like if Ari has a mini lf i want a micro lf to be in an iphone and so as i predicted prior to the event wishing for prores to come to the iphone and was genuinely jaw dropped shocked when they actually did it and there are people who were like eh, prores is going to take up way too much space and be way too much of a hassle to work with. It's just kind of stupid and gimmicky in my opinion. I actually agree with what Jonathan Morrison said in that Twitter feed that talked about it wasn't really a gimmick in my head cinematic mode, which is really cool, but that was the closest feature to like gimmicky. Um, whereas ProRes was kind of a final send off to the us nerds um, who wanted something that the average person doesn't understand, doesn't know about, and probably will never turn on. But it's gonna be a huge game changer for people like me, and here's why. So if you're new around here, uh, I film everything on Blackmagic Pocket uh, cinema cameras, which are smaller cameras, but like this camera is pretty rigged up, and even my Pocket 6K Pro is, you know, larger. I don't take it every time I go with my family to the zoo or or whatever projects. And I don't have any autofocus lenses. So like this is my smaller pocket 4K, but has my uh, IRIX 150. I film everything on IRIX cine lenses. And so almost every time I'm working on a YouTube video, there's a moment where I would love to have like a behind the scenes type, almost like vlog style type shot. And I've done them with my pocket cameras, but it's so hard to like, you either have to mount a monitor on top so you can see yourself and then you have to manually focus and make sure that's fine. And then a uh, mic on top of the camera, like it turns into a whole setup that is larger than what people have for like mirrorless camera setups like a GH5 or Sony or Canon. And so what do I normally do? Is if I'm on set and I wanna capture some behind the scenes thing, talk to, a, talk to a camera real quick, just for whatever, I take out my phone. But my grip with my phone 
is that the footage usually even in proper daylight and stuff it just like the noise and the the mushiness like the compression of the footage isn't great the hardware and the software that apple and samsung and so many other camera manufacturing by the way tomorrow uh, i believe tomorrow my z flip 3 video will be out so get subscribed for that but all these phones have great hardware but the h264 or h265 or HEVC, whatever codecs compress so much. And yes, maybe this ProRes is gonna be overhyped and it's gonna be like a super compressed ProRes that doesn't look that much better than the um, HEVC codecs currently in phones. But what I'm hoping is if it is true, like, professional grade ProRes, the detail in those images are gonna look a lot better. And so what does that mean for people like me? It means that when I want to intercut uh, phone footage with my YouTube videos, it won't look as jarring. And to me, that is really important. I try to make every video look pretty high quality. And so when I have to uh, cut to my phone or something, it's quite jarring going from you know, 6K B-Raw footage to like low light phone footage. It just, it bothers me. And maybe you don't care. Maybe you'll come in and be like, that's still stupid. I don't care. Your videos look fine when you do it. Thank you. But it matters to me and I make the videos. So best believe as soon as that ProRes update comes, I'm going to be filling up that one terabyte. No problem, I'm guessing. Um, and obviously doing a lot of comparisons of ProRes versus the other codecs to see if there is genuinely a difference. For me, it's not just about like some egotistical, like I film ProRes on my one terabyte iPhone. I don't care. I just want whatever gives the best image possible. Now let's talk about my predictions and concerns for the iPhone 13, starting with on the traditional path of ProRes, which a handful of people commented on my last iPhone uh, video last week, and I think it is incredibly a genuine concern is the fact that since Apple did not go USB type C, not only does that add to the inconvenience uh, bucket, but it also presents the issue of transferring that ProRes or even the other uh, footage as well to computers, tablets, wherever you want to edit it. Because the, you know, if you're filming a lot of ProRes on your phone, odds are you're not going to edit it on your phone. Maybe you'll edit it on an iPad, but most likely. Final Cut on a Mac or something. And transferring via the lightning cable, which is still like USB 2.0 or whatever, or pretty slow speeds, that's gonna be really rough. And I know a lot of you are saying, airdrop, that's how we're gonna do it. But even on this current phone right here, if I film a bunch of like test footage for a video and I have like 20 to 50 clips that I need to airdrop to my computer, I have gigabit internet, uh, not uploads, but downloads, and so it's, decently fast, but I still sometimes have to set my phone down for like 15 to 30 minutes and that sucks. I can only imagine if I'm filming the same amount in ProRes that can take multiple gigs per minute, that's gonna potentially take hours to transfer and there's gonna be no ifs and or buts about it. <laughs> so it's one more reason why I completely do not understand why they didn't go USB type C. So I'm very nervous about the ProRes workflow and that is where I can definitely see like Patrick debate of like that if the workflow is slowed down so much that if it's at the end of the day maybe even a 15 to 20 percent quality increase is taking hours extra to transfer the footage worth the bump in quality and that's something that I don't know even someone for like me who craves the best quality constantly. I'm working on multiple client projects and YouTube projects. Like I don't have hours and hours to transfer footage. It's a complete waste of time for me. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, hopefully ProRes comes out in like a beta or something and we can kind of get earlier access to it. But for now I've been scouring the internet trying to find any sort of sample files, but it's way too early for that. So moving on to the next concern and that is in cinematic mode. After I made my other video, more fine print and details came out about how uh, it's only at 1080p at 30 FPS. The frame rate stuff, that doesn't bother me. Anyone who says, oh my gosh, it's not at 60 FPS, it's literally called cinematic mode. It, it shouldn't even be 30, it should be 24 FPS. That also bothers me a bit. But I don't care about having no high frame rates, that makes sense to me. But the 1080p, obviously I, 
I'm sure they tested 4K and I'm guessing that at some point the sensor, the processor, like it's just too much for the processor to handle that depth of field. Um, and I guarantee you that's going to be something they can just highlight feature for next year's phone that they're just kind of saving as they refine it to be like, oh, Cinematic Mode now in 4K. Resolution doesn't bother me a huge bit, but kind of like how I talked about before, compression on phones is already pretty bad. So the resolution decrease isn't going to help anything. Like me on this camera, if I went 6K down to 1080, it still looks very good because like the raw image is still so clear and dynamic range and all that stuff. But 1080p coming from a phone looks pretty rough. And so I don't know, I'm, it makes me a little less excited for cinematic mode. And then the whole, that's right, this kind of is going back to ProRes. I think it's really crappy of Apple to go with like a software limit based on what phone storage capacity you buy. It will limit the resolution of ProRes that you can get. So for the base iPhone 13 with 128 gigs of storage, you only get ProRes up to 1080p at 30 FPS. And so you have to get the 256, 512 or, or one terabyte to get 4K at 30. Now I understand the logic because 128 gigs filming ProRes, it's gonna fill up pretty quick. But this is where, you know, I like the Android community where it's just like, well, like if that's what someone can afford is the 128 gig and they acknowledge that it's going to fill up very quickly, like let them decide that they have to constantly offload footage. Like, I don't like that Apple's like, no, 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 your phone's going to fill up too much. So you need to buy the more expensive version. I think that's, I think that's pretty crappy. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, but there's no other reason besides just them trying to force you into understanding that's going to take up a lot of space uh, to start to store that, I don't know. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I am super excited about the 13. I am so stoked that the majority of like the the 13 Pro event part that they were talking about was, you know, very focused on video production and kind of creating that next level of cinematography on a phone. Cinematic mode and ProRes, they're gonna come with their kind of issues but at the end of the day, I think they're gonna be very welcomed additioned features to the devices that will just get better in further updates and further generations of phones. So I'd love to hear in the comments, did you guys pre-order? Which one did you grab? Again, I know this was just kind of one big rant video. Hopefully it was still enjoyable to listen to. But yeah, once more, if you're not subscribed already, got a ton of content coming. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.